on this episode. So was there love in your family or a pretty difficult situation? Abuse, a lot of mental abuse. So you've had it pretty tough. Yeah. When I go to work, I feel like everybody's talking about me. As soon as I like leave my house, I feel like the whole world hates me. You really think that? Yes, I really do think that. 999,000 out of a million people don't ever move away from the life they came from. They just stay stuck. You know why? I'm Ed Milet. I'm an entrepreneur, best-selling author, and a life coach with one goal, to change people's lives. Grab a seat. Thank you so much. You guys are fire today. Perfect timing because my guest today, Emmeline, is 23 years old. She's a single mother of two small children, and she's here looking for motivation and inspiration. She is the first person in her family ever to graduate high school. She wants to be independent. She wants to be a role model to her children, but says that depression and anxiety keeps her from living up to her full potential. So let's take a look at her submission video. Hello, my name is Emma Ortiz. I am 23 years old. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. I need Ed's help with keeping a job. Some days it's my mental, some days I'm just lazy, some days it's both. I have two kids under the age of two, and I want to show them that whatever you put your mind to, you can do it. I start a new job in two weeks, and I feel like this is the best time to make a change for me and my family. Emma great to have you here. Thank you for having me. So how can I help you? Um, I need help with keeping a job. Um, it's really hard for me right now. When I go to work, I feel like everybody's talking to me. Yeah. I'm talking about me as soon as I like leave my house. I feel like the whole world hates me. What makes you think that? Um, because people are always staring at me. Um, my appearance sometimes. Sometimes I don't like pick out my afro correctly. Uh -oh. I feel like, and I feel like the whole world is like, oh my god, look at her hair. She didn't comb it today. You really think that? Yes, I really do think uh, that. So you got a little trouble with uh, staying consistent. Yes. Kind of emotionally yes. up and down. Yes. Yeah. That's okay. By the way, me too sometimes. And by the way, only like every single human being in the world. Just it's kind of to the extent that we go through those ups and downs, right? So now you've got two babies, correct? How yes. old are your children? My daughter's one and my son just turned a month. Uh, did you just say a month? Yes. Oh my goodness. And you're already, and you have another job you're about to start. Yes, in two weeks. It's oh. at a. Come on now, okay. <laughs> I've been working at a grocery store, taking online orders. Good for you, okay. You. And are you the first person in your family ever to graduate high school, right? Yes. So tell me a little bit about your upbringing and your, your family life, if you don't mind. I know your family family is your boyfriend and your children, but beyond yes. that, family you were raised by. Tell me about them a little bit. Um, my, my family is great. Um, they just weren't supportive like I needed them to be. Mm. Um, Lack of support, like were they, were they negative or just like, hey, don't go chase your dreams or whatever it might be? Um, they were just there because they had to be there, but mm. they weren't there for my mental. They weren't, they wouldn't ask me like how my day was, how was school mm -hmm. or anything like that. I just felt like they didn't care about those things. Yeah. They were just present. So you've had to become pretty self-reliant early on in life. Yes, very early. Yeah. Um, like how early are we talking? When did you leave the house? I left at 18 to go to the shelter. Um, then I went back home. Um, okay. Then I left again because they were all about money. They mm. told me either get a job or get out. Um, mm. And so I, I got out. Mm. Um, so was there love in your family or a pretty difficult situation? It was a pretty difficult situation. Yeah. Um, a lot of trauma. Mm. Um, but there was love just a little bit, okay. but not enough for me. Without, you don't have to be, a, you be as specific as you want to, but when you say trauma, do you mean there's a drug addiction, abuse? Uh, abuse, a lot of like, Sexual abuse, mental abuse. Mm. So you've had it pretty tough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe that's been preparing you to do something great with your life, right? Yes, I it happen, is. I happen to believe that. Um, what's the emotional roller coaster feel like? T t take me through kind of a bad day. Is it, I can't get out of bed type bad day. I'm crying bad day. I'm mad. What's it? What's it like? Um, I'm mad all day. Any, every, any and everything gets on my nerves. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to get out of bed for my kids. If mm -hmm. my kids weren't there, I'd be in bed all day. I'll sleep my life away. Mm -hmm. I don't mind that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really my kids that make me get up because, you know, nobody else is going to feed them, bathe them, or anything like that. That's right. 
you know, let me ask you this. Do you want to survive in life or do you want to thrive in life? I want to thrive. Yeah. I think I feel like I'm surviving yeah. just like above the line. Yep. yep. Um, but I want to be more than that. I love that. And you know, by the way, that's okay. You know, not everybody starts life on third base. Some of us get dealt hands in life where, you know, we are not dealt the hand that allows us to go thrive right out of the gate. And sometimes we have to survive in order to thrive at some point. So that's okay. I actually think you're doing a whole lot better than you give yourself credit for. Oh, thank that's you. That's number one. Just my initial observations. And I think you should think that. I think that, you know, in life, it's important to know that, and you're going to learn this as, as you go through life and as I work with you, that we often will see what we believe most strongly to be true. Your goals and your dreams and the things you want have always been there, but you've been seeing the wrong things. You've been seeing the people talking about you. You've been seeing the difficult things at work. And I have this feeling about you. I think you're the one when I was reading about you. And let me tell you what I mean by that. When I was young and I would go look at these, I'd see these rich people or happy people, in which way, or different things. You could be rich and not happy. You can be really happy and don't have any money, and that's okay, right? But when I used to see these happy families, which I didn't come from, or a rich family, I mean, my family wasn't unhappy, but it wasn't all perfect. I would, uh, I would ask my dad, who are these rich people that live in these beach houses? Or how are they? My dad goes, I don't know, I've never met any of them before. And then I figured out as I got older, I want you to hear me on this. In every family, if you see a happy family, or a rich family, either one, at some point back in their lineage, they weren't. They weren't a happy family. They weren't a rich family. And then the one shows up. And that one changes a family forever. In my family, I'm the one. The world doesn't treat my family like it used to. We don't think like we used to think. We think bigger. We've got goals. We've got dreams. We're not just surviving anymore. And in your family, it sounds to me like you have all the potential in the world to be the one. Do you believe that? Yes, I do. Thank you. I believe that about you. You're the first one to graduate high school. You're the one. You've got a job, right? You're the one. And at some point, at some point in every family, someone shows up and goes, no, 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 this isn't how we're going to live anymore. My kids aren't going to live like I lived. Do you want your two babies to grow up like you grew up, or do you want them to have it better? I want them to have it way better than I ever did. Yeah. What do you want for them? I want them to have a perfect life. I want them to experience what I think is a family, mm. you know, family vacations, going out, um, yeah. parties, birthday parties. Yeah. Um, I want them to have everything, yeah. everything. And so we need to do some stuff for them, don't we? We need to change yes, some stuff. The, yes. Yeah. So I came here to better myself for them. Yeah. We'll be right back. <laughs> you went like this. Is there some shame attached to it? When I talk about it, I just feel embarrassed. Hurt people hurt people. It's a judgment on them when someone's treating you that way. Does that make sense? Yes, I never thought about it like that. With Emily. So right now, you're supporting yourself, which I really admire. What kind of other stuff do you want to be able to do? What kind of, if you could get a dream job, what do you think it would be? What do you think you would want to be doing? Um, becoming a CDL driver. Really? Yes. Really? <laughs> yes. That's cool. That's pretty unique. Um, you know, because they make good money and do. being able to travel while working is great. Mm -hmm. And I want to take my kids on the road with me. You've thought about this. Yes, yeah. I have. It also pays really well. Yes, it does. It really does. does pay really well. So right now you've been getting some help too. So let's get into the real a little bit because you've been you've been you've worked very hard, but also you you're getting help. So you're on some different government stuff that helps you as well. Yes. And I want people to hear about this because they know somebody who is or isn't as well. So what kind of assistance or government help do you get? Um, right now I have supportive housing. Um, okay. They pay all my bills, mm -hmm. my rent, and all my utilities. Mm -hmm. um, they also help with. Clothing for my kids, food for them, uh, food for myself, hygiene products. Um, they help with a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I'm also in a youth program that helps with my phone bill. 
Yeah. Um, my Wi-Fi bill, um, medical issues. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of support yeah. right now. When you talked about your dreams and the things you wanted, you had this huge smile on your face. And then when I talked about the help you were getting, you went like this. Is there a little bit of you that wishes you weren't getting that help? Is there some shame attached um, to it? When I talk about it, I just feel embarrassed um, mm. because I feel like people might think, like, you're getting all this help and you just can't get up and get a job. Mm. Yeah. You've had some people speak some negatives into your life before, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. And then, and that's okay. They were wrong, by the way. Hurt people hurt people. And so when people are projecting pain onto you, if you can remember this the rest of your life, it's really difficult too because you want to get right back at them, right? But when someone's giving you pain or hurt, it's a judgment on them when someone's treating you that way. And you can almost, I've almost gotten to the point in my life, and by the way, I'm not immune to this either. People can say bad things to me too. I actually feel sympathy and empathy to think you've taken time out of your life and your day to spend that time thinking about me and saying something negative about me. What kind of pain or how bad do they must feel about themselves in order to do that to you or me? Does that make sense? Yes, I never thought about it like that. Yeah, they're really hurting. And the cool thing is, it's rare, it happens. Most people aren't thinking about you. You know what they're thinking about? What you're thinking about them. <laughs> they're thinking about what you're thinking about them most of the time. But when they are saying something negative about you or they are hating on you, that's usually a pretty good sign you're doing something right, just so you know. You hear me on that? Yeah. I think you're more motivated than you give yourself credit for, by the way. So Thank take you. me through. You want to travel. You want vacations. You want those things in your life. Has there been a point where you were the lowest, though? Was there a point where, you know, at any point the last three or four years, you're like, I'm just going to give up on all this stuff. I'm not even going to try. Or have you always had this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an effort type attitude? Before I had my kids, it, I just, I was like, I'm going to give up. There's really no point. Mm. Um, you know, I have all the support in the world. I don't mm. have to really do nothing. So I could just sleep my life away. Mm. Um, then my kids came. Yeah, your kids. I have this interesting connection with you I'm trying to kind of get to because you have this light about you. Like, I'll smile when you smile, right? People, we're always putting energy onto people. You have great energy. Thank you. You have successful energy. You have a happy energy about you. Yet, you've said, sometimes I just didn't show up to work. Like, I got yeah. up and I just didn't go. What would cause you those mornings not to go to work? If I'm running late, then I won't go. Okay. If I wake up like tired or yeah. if I wake up sad, mm -hmm. um, I feel like there's no point of going because mm -hmm. then I might ruin everybody else's day. So, so you, because you, you think you're gonna ruin everybody else's day? Yeah, okay. like if I come into work with negative energy, mad with attitude, then people are gonna sense that and they're gonna be mad with attitude for no reason because I came in. But your choice then to do that, let's think about this for a minute, your choice to do that is then to lose the job, right? So yeah. if I'm running a place, I'd rather have somebody there who, you know, may not bring their A game every day or someone who literally no-shows and that I have to replace, right? So those choices, see, I have this thing about you. I actually don't think you lack motivation. And I don't even think, this is funny from a guy who's known as a motivator, but I'm not even so sure motivation every single day is that important of a deal. I don't think the separator in life is how motivated or inspired we are every single day. Is that crazy? <laughs> I think the separator is what we do on the days we're not. The most successful people are not motivated all of the time. Okay, They find motivation, they find inspiration, but they have habits and disciplines and rituals they do daily that override their emotions. If we're governed in our life by our emotions, we're gonna have a lot of ups and downs in our life, but if we're governed by our habits, that's a whole different thing. And so we're gonna talk about that. They weren't there for me mentally like I wanted them to be. You're amazing, you're beautiful, you're smart, you're successful. You didn't hear a lot of that, did you? No, not at Did all. you hear any of that? Not really. Yeah. You know why? Are you a good mom? Yes. Why? What makes you think you're a good mom? Um, well, because I'm there for them. Mm -hmm. I'm always there for them when they're crying, when they're not crying, when they're laughing, when they're not laughing, when they're happy, when they're hungry. Mm -hmm. I'm always there for them. Mm -hmm. Was your family not like that for you? <laughs> no, they, they were just present because they had to be there because yeah. if they weren't there, they'll get in trouble. Yeah. Um, but they weren't 
there for me mentally like I wanted them to be mm -hmm. and like how I am with my kids. Yeah. You know why? No, I don't know why. You're the one. When you're a parent, a lot of things with our kids are caught, not taught. They watch. These little eyes are watching you. And they're watching to see how happy mama is. Is mama really happy? No. Is mama getting up and doing what she needs to do? And so just realize this, they're watching you constantly. And by the time they're about seven or eight years old, they figure it out. They don't express it, but they know. And all they want, all they want. You know, when they get a little bit older, you're gonna go to their little recital at school, or you know, they bring home a report card, or you're gonna go to one of their sports games. You'll see all the kids there. But you know which kids you'll watch the whole time? Mine. You'll watch yours. <laughs> right now, even if you take them to a playground, right? There's all the kids, you see yours. Yes. And you have to remember <laughs> something, all they see it's me. Is there one mama? <laughs> Thank you. You're the one. You're the one. And I'm going to help you become the one. I think what you're dealing with is totally normal. I also think it's pretty normal for your age. And I think people watching this a lot of times, we're just, listen, we're our own worst critic in life. And I'm looking at this woman right here, and you know how you're getting help, and your shoulders shrugged when you were saying you're getting help? Do you want to have that help the rest of your life, or do you want to be independent? No, I want to. I want to be independent. Yeah, and watch how you did it. It's interesting when you watch. You no, you. You. I want to be independent, and I know you do. So I don't think there's any shame in getting help in life. By the way, I think there's some shame in staying in it forever and not breaking the cycle and not being willing to do things in order to change our life. Because life doesn't just happen when we think things, and I think it's this negative belief you have about yourself that's causing you not to get up some mornings. This negative belief you have about yourself that's causing you to think someone's talking bad about me and what my hair looks like today. And maybe they have, but I doubt most of the time they are. I mean, I, I can tell you right now, there are people watching you they're like, I'm watching a young woman here with a ton of potential. I'm watching a woman who's overcome a lot. I'm watching a woman who loves her children. I'm watching a woman who's already got kind of a dream that she's, a, do you know how many people your age have no idea what they want to do? Absolutely no idea. And by the way, that's okay at certain ages too. But you already kind of know, I, you didn't even hesitate. I said, what do you want to do? He said, I want to drive. I want to do this. Why? Well, I could take my kids with me. I could travel. I could have experience. Like, that's a sense of direction already in your life. The most powerful thing in the world is to live a life consistent with how we perceive ourselves, our identity. And unfortunately for you, you weren't raised where people were pouring belief into you. Is that a safe thing to say? Yes. That you're amazing, you're beautiful, you're smart, you're successful. You didn't hear a lot of that, did you? No, not did at all. Did you hear any of that? Not really. Yeah. So. Because of that, our beliefs about ourselves are formed when we're young. And we're defenseless, by the way. Right? So we start just believing these things about ourselves. And then as we get older, we begin to reinforce and prove to ourselves what they told us is right. And then we find ourselves on a Wednesday morning going, I don't know why I really didn't go to work this day. I can't really explain why I didn't go. I didn't wake up feeling very good, so I just didn't go. I think we didn't go because we have this identity of somebody who just doesn't really win because no one told us we're special. No one saw our greatness. But when I look at you, I see this energy and this light. I, I'm trying to not smile so much because we're having a serious conversation, but every time you smile, I want to smile. You have like this infectious energy about you, <laughs> this very serious interview, but like you have this beautiful spirit about you. Thank you. And I want you to embrace that. I want you to work on your identity because you're never going to get more out of life than your identity. And the good news, in this day and age today, there's a lot of tools that could help you. So I'm going to make some recommendations to you. And this is for everybody who thinks they're lacking performance or motivation in their life. I don't think that you're lacking very much. I think we need to make some tweaks and some adjustments to help you with your change with some tools. Do you want what I think those tools are? Are you willing to implement the change if I give it to you? Yes. 100%? 100%. Okay. We're going to absolutely flip the script for you right now. Okay? okay. With Emily. All right, here we go. Pick two or three great podcasts that you could listen to. You can get them on your phone, okay? A podcast, so when you're driving, less music, less talk radio, 
more podcasts that are personal development or success-based podcasts. You start listening to those things, it'll feed your spirit, it'll feed your identity. They almost become like friends of yours because you're listening to them in your car. You with me on that? Yeah. So that's the first thing. Will you listen to some podcasts for me? Yes. The, the second thing is I want you to begin to read. Okay? Remember this term. Readers are leaders. And you're a leader. You're a leader of two children. Their entire life's up to you. So you need to become a leader. You need to feed your thinking. When we're not raised with these positive thoughts or belief systems or habits or just mindsets. We need to learn them. I needed to learn them. You know why I'm so into this? You don't know this about me. I grew up in a pretty dysfunctional family. My dad was an alcoholic until I was 15 years old. A loving family, but we had our stuff. And I had no self-esteem at all. I thought people were talking about me all the time. And they kind of were. They used to call me Eddie Spaghetti. Your meatballs are ready. Then they tease me and beat me up at school. I didn't believe good things about myself. And so I had to learn about personal development and mindset just to become a baseline functioning person. But then when I got pretty good at it, I started reading more books and more books and listening to more podcasts and going to more events. And it changed me. And I think it can change you. Are you open to that? Say, please say yes. Yes. Okay. You do not lack motivation. You lack mindset and you lack like some direction and some habits. It's, what do I do when I wake up in the morning? If you can control the first 30 minutes of your day, just the first 30 minutes, and you control the last 30 minutes before you go to bed every night, there's a high probability you'll be in control the middle of the day. But if you're out of control the first 30 minutes, you wake up, you're checking your phone, you're on email, you're replying, the kid, you're gonna be out of control all day long. So we need to establish some habits and disciplines for you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Why? Because then on the days you're not feeling it, you resort to your habits. The problem in life is, is that if we don't have good habits, on the days we're not feeling it, we got nothing to rely on. And then you're like, you know what? It's 11 o'clock, I didn't go into work. So we have to have those habits in the morning, habits in the evening. You know one simple thing I do every morning? What? I make my bed. Oh my God. Is that crazy? Why do what? I do that? Why do I do it? It's part of my routine, I can control it, and it's something I can check off the box. It starts my day with momentum. I did what I said I was going to do. That seems so silly. But I have found the most happy and successful people do very simple things early in the day that they can keep their commitments to. Make sense? Yeah. So that'll be in those things. Little habits and rituals and disciplines. And then we need goals. So I'm going to ask you this. You're 23, right? Yes. Okay. You're 30 years old. And I said, what's your dream picture for your life at 30 years old? What would, you be, what would your life look like at that time? I have my own house by then. You'd own a house. With a big backyard. Big backyard. Um, one car. You'd have a car, okay. Um, and my kids would be happy. I like that. So that's a seven year goal. Will you write that down for me? Yes. I want that to be written down. And what I would like you to start to do is start to find pictures of what that house would look like. What your dream house would look like. And then I'd like you to cut those pictures out. Or I'd like them to be the screensaver on your phone. I'd like a picture of it up on your mirror in the morning when you're getting ready. I want you to begin to look at what your future's gonna look like over and over again. Can you do that for me? Yeah. Having that goal that you're moving towards that you see all the time, our mind moves towards what it's most familiar with. So if you're seeing that house, you're seeing those kids, you're seeing that on your phone, it reminds your mind every day to start working on that. So I want everyone to always set up a long-term goal. And then I want you to have a one-year goal a one month goal and a goal every single week. And then there's the kicker. I want a goal every day. So I want you, when you get back, I want you to write down in one year, this is what I want for my life. Whether that's the job that I have, or maybe I've moved towards getting that license to drive my truck, an amount of money saved. Maybe it's I want to take my kids to Disney World for a weekend a year from now. But you write those goals down for one year. So we have a long term goal and then a one year goal. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then for every single month, from now on, the rest of your life like I do, you just have a goal for the month, just one goal. And then every single week on Sunday nights, you just go, what's my goal for the week? Okay, does that okay. make sense? Yeah. And then every day before you go to bed or when you wake up in the morning, this is my goal today. And when we start having goals, we start having habits, routines that we rely on, and then we have some stuff we're feeding our mindset and our spirit and our identity. These are the three things we do to change our life. And you've already accomplished more. 999 
thousand out of a million people don't ever move away from the life they came from. They stay in the same life as their parents, the same emotions, the same life. They just stay stuck. You've already moved out of that life. Now the fun stuff happens. You get to move into the life you do want. And the things I've given you here are the things required to do it. If you do those things, I promise you in seven years, you're going to come back and see me and go, guess what? I got the house. Guess what? My kids are happy. Guess what? I'm in a pretty good relationship. Guess what? I'm making my dreams come true. Because you'll have all of the stuff, all the ingredients to have made that change. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I for think you're awesome. You. All right. I love taking questions from the audience. Here's a great one. How did you bounce back from being on the verge of being broke? Uh, yeah, I was really broke. I had a car repossessed, had a house foreclosed, had the power turned off. That was always fun. Let me tell you what's worse than your power being turned off. I don't know if any of you had this happen before. I had the water turned off. Water you can't cook, you can't brush your teeth, and I was newly married. I'd have to get up every morning. My new wife and I, who's still my wife, we would walk down to the apartment complex. I got lost the house, now we're in an apartment and I'd hold a towel up every morning in the outdoor pool and she would take her shower and brush her teeth. And then we would switch and my new bride would hold the towel up while I took a shower and brushed my teeth outside. And then I'd walk back up those stairs and have to start my day, trying to sell the dream to the world while I'm living a nightmare. And the way that I changed that was I got really, really serious about my personal development. I got really, really serious about my self-confidence. That was a man who lacked self-confidence. That was a guy who didn't keep promises to himself. That was a dude who would say, hey, I'm getting up at 6 and I'm going to go work out. Hit snooze three times, 7.15. Ah, I'll do it tomorrow, right? I'm going to make 20 contacts in my business today. By 1 o'clock, I hadn't made one. And I finally changed and I started to keep the promises that I made to myself and I started to develop some habits and rituals and routines like we've talked about on the show because I wasn't inspired. I was not motivated. I couldn't find that every single day. So I had to rely reflexively because under pressure, we resort to our habits in life. When pressure's applied, you go to habit mode. That's why some athletes under pressure throw a touchdown, another one throws a pick. Hits the three, misses the three. It's our habits and rituals that we fall on when pressure's applied. There was a lot of pressure at that time in my life. I developed better habits and routines and worked on my self-confidence, and that really is what made the change for me.